What is the meaning of a dream? Only Asha knows. Are they omens warning us of future tragedies? Distant memories dying in the deafening silence of the void? Or are they sometimes both? The Welcome to the Feature of the Week presented by Gamers R Us. This is Alex, and this week we're talking about Might and Magic 10 Legacy. Might and Magic 10 Legacy was developed by Ubisoft, and just a disclaimer, it will require you play to play. Um, I personally haven't had very many problems with it right now, but I have had issues with the platform before, so full disclaimer for everyone that may be interested in, pur uh, in purchasing this game. Before you can start the game, you have to create your party, which is made up of four different party members, which are chosen from four different races. A total of 12 different classes as well. Now you can custom create your own characters, which I did personally, or you can uh, get pre made characters, which, if you're new to this kind of game, you may wish to do. At least until you kind of get the hang of the way the skill system works, the way the combat works, and just the general thinking behind the, how you play this game. As you can see, there are a good number of skills, but they don't seem to oh, overload you uh, with Very skills. Good. It almost seems in a way that this game is a merger tide. between uh, yeah, the new and old school, east. obviously with a very much an old school interface. Oh, For those not used to uh, the Might and Magic series, uh, the, the interface may actually be something that would be very difficult to get over because it just seems so unnatural. You have a party here, but it's taken from one person's perspective. Uh, some people may have a problem with that. Um, I know a few people at Gamers R Us uh, find the idea a little uh, off-putting. Um, overall, you can see graphically the game looks pretty good, um, but as you can see, the way you move, the whole thing is tile-based. It's not exactly a uh, full free roam in that way. It's uh, turn-based in every way possible. Now, you go through day-night cycles based on the number of turns you make, and each turn takes a predetermined amount of time. Uh, there are tons and tons of secrets to find all over the map as they, well, each area, as you can see there with that book. There's a lot of loot chests around which can give you a good amount of, uh, you know, like catch-up loot, money, things like that, that you will need for this game because at times the difficulty is goes from very hard to almost unreasonable. Now as you can see here, this is one of the special uh, modes in the game, which is pixelated graphics. Old school, 1989 19 to 1991 or two, pixelated style graphics. Uh, which is a nice touch, uh, but frankly, you won't be using it very often during the game. It's just a cool little uh, feature to have, but you're never going to really be using it. Uh, because just detail is just not defined enough. The graphics engine itself is already simple, and the reduction in detail just makes it th that feature kind of unplayable in normal play. And there is a lot of game to play here. Uh, don't be surprised if in the first act you spend a good 10 hours plus, because I know I did. Um, this game will offer you know a ton, a ton of gameplay. Um, it, it's just whether you are personally interested in the this type of gameplay style or not. Uh, it's obviously appealing to uh, older sensibilities. In doing so, uh, they know that the $25 price tag is there for a reason. They know they're going to be charging basically $25 for a game that uh, really runs a lot on nostalgia. And while the gameplay is pretty good through most parts, uh, this game definitely is a nostalgia factor. Anything more than really the price tag it had for 25 bucks uh, would probably be too much. Definitely a $60 title. Would, th this would not warrant $60 for sure. Also, load times at times uh, seem to be very, very long. Uh, so if you're loading a dungeon, you have enough time to get a drink, maybe cook up a grilled cheese. In addition, the map system is not the most informative. It's adequate, uh, but it is definitely not the most informative thing out there. You're going to kind of be um, really just trying to guess where you're supposed to go sometimes in the main quest. You know, I I didn't know, for instance, I had to go check back 
back in the city, I thought I would go get the next step onward. So there, there is sometimes confusion because it's not that uh, well spelled out at times. The journal could definitely also have a little bit more detail. That just may be a side effect or tacit effect of uh, the gameplay style, which kind of focuses on you um, being self-reliant, thinking out of the, outside the box, kind of approaching the game in a very natural, almost holistic way. Uh, very much the old style type of uh, development and kind of game logic, but at times it seems almost unreasonable <laughs> with you know the guesses you have to make. Speaking of guesses you have to make, be very careful about some of the random caves and crypts you go into, because one time I walked into one and just got smoked by a dragon. Another time I just got instantly smoked by a cyclops. Uh, so there's a lot of danger in this world. Overall, while some people may find the gameplay stale, the story is reasonably interesting, and the side quests themselves, some of them are actually rather engrossing. So, I would say, give it a try. But you have to be prepared to do a lot of reading. There's not a whole lot of voiceover work, so you're going to have to uh, be hooked on phonics for this one.